I'm very happy to be with you today. I'm also a bit scared because I'm going to talk about PHP. Yeah, yeah, PHP, this, you know, weird web language that you probably learn to hate so much. Um, so, as Sylvan, Sylvan said, um, I'm an entrepreneur uh, who loves open source, um, and I happen to write code in PHP. I'm a huge contributor on GitHub. I'm in the top five most um, <clears throat> active users on GitHub, mainly contributing to PHP projects like uh, Twig, which is uh, a templating system for PHP, Silex, which is a micro framework for PHP, and Symfony, which is a set of components for PHP and also a full stack framework. So when it comes to PHP, I know what I'm talking about. Um, but today I'm not going to show you much PHP code on the slides. Instead, I want to talk about the current state of PHP. And, you know, I think that PHP is at a turning point in its life. Um, so, the question is, what can we do, what can I do, to make PHP still relevant uh, for the next decade? And can it become hype again? It's happening in JavaScript, so why not? <laughs> I'm going to be very honest about PHP today. Um, personally, um, I have a hate-love relationship with PHP. Like, you know, many developers, um, I've been a PHP developer for the last 10 years or so, and yet I don't like PHP. I'm, you know, I think I'm not the only one. And I think people hate PHP as a language, right? But PHP got something right, and that's the platform. And I think that many people like PHP as a platform. So I don't like PHP as a language. I like it mostly as a platform. So PHP was created a very long time ago by Rasmus Lerdorf, and the, the version we are using uh, on a day-to-day -day basis nowadays uh, is based on a work from Andy Gutmans and Ziv Zorowski, which means that you know, um, there are no dictators uh, for PHP, and that's a big problem in my book. Um, so for a very long time, um, adding new features in PHP, um, it was a very uh, weird process uh, with no discussion at all. So if some core PHP developer has a need, it just you know, committed something to uh, the repository directly. And also because PHP has no specifications. So that's probably why PHP is so inconsistent and surprising at times. Fortunately, things are getting better. Things are getting fixed. Uh, and PHP now has a much uh, better process for accepting changes to the language itself uh, with an RFC process. Uh, it also has a very well-defined release policy. So those changes led to um, a lot of great features that we um, that people added along the years, the last two or three years, um, like um, real anonymous functions, um, generators, traits, and even coroutines. So all those features were discussed a lot on the mailing list before being accepted into the core, and that, that's a great change, really. But PHP also evolved because uh, of user and changes uh, with Composer, uh, Composer is um, a dependency manager for PHP. So thanks to Composer, thanks to um, more discussion between developers of big projects, now people start reusing code from one project to the next one. So one great um, example of that is that the next version of Drupal is going to use some of the Symfony components, and I think that's a big deal. Um, so even if PHP still has some problems, I think that everyone is working really hard to fix all those issues, um, the community, the processes, the tools, everything really. And of course, I all think that you know, PHP got some of the things right from the get-go. I think that having one data structure uh, to rule them all arrays in PHP was a great idea. 
Uh, of course, it has some weird behaviors at times, but I think it was a really good idea for um, newcomers and, and, and the uh, learning curve um, um, for PHP. So that's PHP as a language. I think it's getting better um, and, and things are um, being fixed uh, with time. And I think people like PHP as a platform probably because PHP was created specifically for the web. This is one of the only language that was specifically created for uh, the web. So if you have no prior knowledge of PHP or the web, uh, you can kind of really easily create your first website. And that's also because there is a great documentation uh, website for PHP, and it's also very easy to install, easy to configure, and easy to host. So there, that's, that's a great platform. And as a matter of fact, PHP is the most popular um, server-side language for, for the web. According to uh, W3Tex, it owns 80% of the web. That's a huge number, and okay, it's probably not accurate, but even if we are talking about, let's say, 40% of the web, that's still a huge number. So we have a clear winner here. Uh, PHP is massive, like no other uh, technologies on the server side. More interesting is that if you have a look at the biggest open source platform, um, the biggest platforms um, on, on the web, you can see that WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Magento, Typo3, all those software are written in PHP. That says something about PHP itself. So WordPress is powering about 20% of the web, and I think that the success here is not the language, it's the platform. People love WordPress not because it's written in PHP, but because the way PHP works, the way it's so easy to contribute something, so there are hundreds, thousands of modules for WordPress. Um, and to me, the most important PHP asset is the way it works. Right, so. Um, so this is a typical architecture for um, uh, installing PHP. You have a web server, Apache, Nginx, whatever. Then you have PHP FPM, which manages uh, a set of PHP processes. So this is a typical share nothing architecture, but as we will see in a minute, pushed to the limits. Um, so here you can see a typical um, life cycle of um, several requests. So you have the PHP process. Uh, PHP itself is uh, about a bunch of modules. So each time you create a new PHP process, there is all the module initialization. That's the blue box at the top. And then you have the shutdown at the end when um, uh, PHP FPM is going to recycle the, the PHP process. And then every time there is a request, we initialize the request, we run some PHP script, and then we shut down everything. And our shutdown, the request shutdown, is really about, you know, trust everything about the current request. Everything you've done during the request is just discarded. Right? So you need to do the same things over and over again. And because of this request shutdown, um, PHP is very stable. It does not leak memory um, from one request to the next one, and it does not crash. But during the last few years, uh, PHP evolved a lot, as I said before, and the ecosystem also evolved a lot. So people are now using PHP in a very different way um, than you know, the old simple script that you had 10 or 15 years ago. So now we have frameworks, we have ORMs, we have um, dependency injection containers, we have object-oriented programming everywhere, class autoloading, and much more. And all those things are really nice if you are talking about scaling your team, if you, are, if you, are, if you want to scale your developers, um, but it comes at a price, performance. And PHP was never optimized for this kind of use cases, which means that those applications are really slow. And of course, um, whenever there is a new PHP version coming out, uh, it is much better than the previous one. The performance is much better, typically anywhere between 5 and 10%. Um, and the same goes for memory consumption. But we are still talking about small performance improvements. Um, there is also a great initiative by Facebook. They created uh, HHVM, which is really a new implementation of PHP. Um, uh, that's very difficult because PHP, again, has no specifications. But they are um, working really hard. So this is a C++ implementation of PHP. 
uh, with modern compilation techniques uh, with a just in time compiler. And that speeds up a lot, all those heavy apps. Uh, this is also very exciting because Facebook invests a lot of money to be sure that uh, all our applications work equally well on PHP and HHVM. So I think that's probably something that can make PHP hype again. We'll see. So anyway, those improvements are, ni are, are nice, but I'm looking at speeding up PHP much more than gen just 10 or, or 15%. Um, I want to improve the performance of PHP by a factor of, or, of 10 or 20, perhaps. So to be able to achieve that, uh, let's have a deeper look at how uh, typical PHP request actually works. So when PHP executes your script, um, when you're using a framework like Symfony, we have a fat bootstrap phase where we load a lot of files, we create a lot of objects, then we execute the request logic and then we clean up and the request shutdown kills everything. So it kills performance really because at the very end of the request, it trashes everything, even the things that we could have reused from one request to the next one. That's why modern PHP apps are really slow. So the challenge is to avoid you know, trashing things that can be reused from one request to the next one, things that do not really depend on the request. And by doing that, it should be possible to speed up PHP apps by a factor of 20. So how is it possible? Conceptually, if we could do the bootstrapping during the module init phase, so this one is executed just once when we create a PHP process, you know, and, and we move there, everything that, you know, do not depend on the request, then it could be uh, really useful. But of course, we can't do that because PHP does not allow us to hook into those events. But conceptually, that's what I want to do, and that's also how many other languages work. So we need to figure out, out a way to actually simulate that um, in, P, in plain PHP. So what we need is an application server uh, probably written in PHP. There are many challenges. Um, I'm not going to talk about all the challenges here today, but the first one is how we control global states, right? Because uh, we assume that PHP is going to trash everything at the end of the request uh, a lot of applications assume that you are dealing with just one request. So you have global states uh, that depend on the request uh, and that's, that's really bad. And PHP itself assume that, right? There is one request per request cycle. So there is a bunch of global variables. So you can't deal with more than one request uh, per request cycle, really. Uh, and that's why in Symfony we have this nice object, the request object, so you can create a request from the global variables, but you can also create a request from anything. So it's possible to deal with more than one request um, uh, within one PHP request cycle. Uh, the same goes for the response. PHP assume that you are going to deal with one response, and whenever you echo something into uh, the standard output, it means that you are outputting something for the current request, which is kind of bad. Um, and again, of course, uh, Symfony has uh, a nice response object to abstract that. That's the first challenge. The second one is how you can handle several requests, HTTP requests, within one PHP request cycle. Because, of course, PHP is doing a lot of stuff during the request initialization and the request shutdown. Um, so in Symfony, we have abstracted that into an HTTP kernel interface. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, but it's kind of, you know, um, a process with a bunch of events you can hook into uh, to um, be able to handle a request, and you can also make sub-requests, which means that you can handle more than one request per um, PHP request cycle. So that's kind of, you know, Symfony is also kind of uh, a middleware for PHP application, a bit like what you had in Ruby with Rack or WSGI for um, Python. It's not exactly the same, but it's about standardizing um, the HTTP protocol and the way we actually interact with it. Um, so this is the, the, the next challenge. Um, so for instance, this is uh, some snippets of code from uh, PHP source code. So for instance, during the request initialization, um, PHP start a session, 
Of course, we can do that uh, from Userland. That's not a big deal. It cleans up um, everything at the end, like rolling back transactions and stuff like that. And all those things, we can do the same from um, PHP. So we can simulate what PHP does um, in, in, in PHP directly. And then there are also some things that we do not want PHP to do, like cleaning the auto-loading functions, for instance. We want to keep that from one request to the next one. So the fact that we are bypassing all those events is kind of nice. The next challenge is about memory leaks. Of course, as we are going to handle more than one request, and PHP is not really um, optimized for that use case, we are going to have memory leaks. And during the last two or three years, I worked really hard to optimize Symfony so that the core components of Symfony, they do not leak memory or not too much. Um, so based on those facts, I think it's really possible to create an application server for PHP. Um, and actually, there are some proof of concepts um, that I'm going to talk about uh, in a minute. So the first one is PHP PM. Um, it's written entirely in PHP based on React PHP. React PHP is the equivalent of what Node.js is uh, for JavaScript because it shows you that with this application server written in plain PHP with Nginx uh, on top of that, you can get uh, 15 times um, uh, improvement for a typical really fat Symfony application, 15 times faster with PHP PM and Nginx instead of plain uh, Nginx and PHP FPM. And so when I started to work on, on Symfony uh, four or five years ago, I was uh, really conscious about this problem. And that's why I really uh, worked on optimizing everything in Symfony so that we can actually create uh, this kind of application server. So as you might have guessed, I'm also working on such an application server. I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, but it's written in Go with a small amount of PHP uh, for the glue, and um, I get kind of the same numbers that um, I've talked about with PHP PM, anywhere between 15 and 20 percent, uh, 20 times fast, faster than uh, regular PHP PM and Nginx. Today, I wanted to share my thought about PHP and how we can make it better. Um, I like PHP as a platform. I think that HHVM, Composer, RFCs, and all those nice stuff. Um, and some other initiatives can save PHP from becoming uh, the next COBOL or something. Um, and who knows, PHP can be hyper again soon. Thank you.